David and Teresa Moeller. We own the Tato Nut Shop in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and we have two girls, Caitlin and Sophia Moeller. In August of 2009, Sophia started having her eye cross. We took her to the eye doctor and tried some glasses, and it wasn't really helping. It, you know, seemed to be getting worse, actually. We were sent to the emergency room to have an MRI, and they did find a mass at the base of her brain stem. We got a call from a, a doctor, and he talked to Teresa. His specialty was that particular tumor, which is you know, more or less a terminal, no cure type of brain tumor for children between the ages of seven and 10. So Typically, the children don't live for a year. A year. And Sophia was actually listed in the 1% of survivors because she lived for 53 weeks after diagnosis. Lorelai had a really long journey. Um, she first started showing symptoms of her disease when she was 20 months old. She went from being a very precocious and healthy little girl to one night, um, Levi and I woke up and she was gasping for water and we gave her water and it wasn't enough. And she drank cup after cup and could not quench her thirst. From the time that she first started having that thirst, she had cancer and the cancer had eaten through her skull to her brain. They put her on chemo, but the first chemo didn't work. There were spinal taps, and then there was radiation and the radiation worked and they were able to put her on a more aggressive chemotherapy. So all of that took about four years and you feel like it's one issue after another and you're not gaining back that ground. We're about granting wishes to children with life-threatening medical conditions, not necessarily terminal. So once we know that a child's wish is determined and approved by the medical professionals, then that's when we get to work. We assemble a wish team of two volunteers to go and interview the family and the child to determine what the child's one true wish is. And then we move heaven and earth to make sure that wish comes true. No matter how silly or how funny or how complicated it may be, or even how much money it may take. Um, if that's that child's one true wish, well, we're gonna do everything in our power in Mississippi to make sure that happens. A family going through such a hard time and tragic time needs some hope and Receiving a, a wish brings that hope. Hope for the future, hope for a well child, hope for a well family, for a happy family. Anything that you can do just to put a little bit of light in these children and these families' lives, especially when they're going through so much heartache and you know, you're never given tomorrow. So you have to make 150% for today. So anything we can do as wish granters or as make a wish as a whole, it's definitely worth it. So many times our doctors tell us that a child will combat that illness and move forward based on the fact that they know that they have a wish. We got her treatment started right away, um, probably within a week of going out to MD Anderson, maybe two weeks from diagnosis. and. Um, and we were there for 48 days. We stayed at the Ronald McDonald House. The nurses and staff there at MD Anderson had tried to start making arrangements for her to get a wish. When they came to the house, they brought pepperoni pizzas. One said Sophia and one said Caitlin, spelled out in pepperonis. And um, Paul talked to us at the kitchen table and they did make every effort to include Caitlin, Caitlin. and her sister yeah. too. Well, the Mullers are a well-known family in Ocean Springs. Everyone loves their donuts. So uh, the name was very obvious to me when I received the uh, request to be a wish grantor for Sophia Moeller. Sophia was torn between going to Disney World or going to New York to meet the cake boss. Uh, she had already designed the cake she wanted to make. Whenever we left, it was still teetering between those two options. The family had been frequent visitors to Disney World, so, uh, but I did have to inform them that going to Disney World as a Make-A-Wish family is a completely different experience than going on your own. And then within a couple of days, they called me and told me they had made the decision and Sophia had chosen to go to Disney World. Well, of course, with her mother's blessing, uh, I contacted her school, uh, St. Alphonsus Elementary School. I contacted the principal and said that we were going to let Sophia know 
her wish was going to be granted. We had the mayor of Ocean Springs come to the school and proclaim it Sophia Moeller Day. Then she got super excited. She tied the balloons that they had brought to her boot, and she was just running around the cafeteria with the Make-A-Wish balloons flying behind her. <laughs> Since we've been going already our whole life, more or less, we already, you know, thought it was a great place, but then it was taken to another whole level with the Make-A-Wish concept. I describe it as that money can't buy it. They're looking out for Wish kids and Wish families, you know, all through the parks and all day, and they're just going way out of their way. One thing that she had never been able to do that she wanted to do was meet Tinkerbell. And um, so they arranged for her to meet Tinkerbell. And she wanted to go to the Mad Hatter's tea, tea party. party. And she did that as well. The two of them got to go. No parents were allowed at the tea party. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little nerve wracking, but <laughs> they had a fabulous time. After four years of what's next, what's next, what's next, all of a sudden, the doctor says your daughter's well. And that was hard as a parent to understand that you don't have to fight anymore. So um, for us, when Make-A-Wish contacted us, it was at that period in our life. And it was a special gift to Lorelai because Lorelai during all of this time just wanted to be normal. She just wanted to go to school. She just wanted to play with her friends. My wish experience with the Abel family was probably um, one of the most impactful wishes I think I've done. When I first went to the family's home, I was greeted at the door by this little red-headed girl that was just bubbly and full of life, and she sort of gave me the once-over before she actually let me in her home. Uh, I know that when she came over, we thought it was such a big deal, and we were like, all right, make a wish, because everybody's heard of make a wish, you know? And uh, then she asked us, what does she want to do? And we were like, Phew. I have no idea what she wants to do. Why don't, why don't we ask her? It's a great <laughs> idea. And so <laughs> Marsha did a great job of talking to Lorelai to understand how she ticked, what motivated her and what brought her joy. And what brought her joy was serving animals. Um, that's what she wants to do. She wants to be a caretaker. Lorelai's wish was to work with animals and the plants and that kind of thing. So her send-off party for her wish was to go to the Hard Rock Casino and meet Jack Hanna, the um, zoologist, and be on stage with him. Jack Hanna said, uh, you, Lorelai, you get to be zookeeper for a day. and." I was ecstatic. It was, it was very cool. I actually remember pretty well because uh, I was in another room or something. She came out with like a big button of Make a Wish. I was like, uh, oh, I guess it's just another fairy thing or something. She's like, Keegan, I'm gonna be a zookeeper. I was like, oh, sweet. She was zookeeper for a day at the Audubon Zoo in New Orleans. And so they came and picked us up in a limo. And when they arrived, they had a zookeeper's outfit for Lorelei with her name on it and a zookeeper underneath. And the, the director of the zoo was there to greet her. We went from one exhibit to the next. Um, one that always stands out in our minds are, it was the elephant exhibit. The elephants were so maternal with uh, Lorelei and Keegan and they held her and their trunk. It was very tender and very, very precious to her. They yeah. still worked her though. I mean, it wasn't like an easy day for her. I mean, cause I remember there's a picture of the wheelbarrow with the elephant dung in there and she was wheelbarrowing it out. And I mean, she had to put all the food in there and then bring it out to them. And I mean, it was really, it was a zookeeper for a day. So she had to do everything the zookeeper said. It was yeah. awesome. They made me carry a wheelbarrow of elephant poop. I mean, I had help because I'm not that strong when I was six years old, but I, I carried elephant poop. <laughs> I could cross that off my bucket list. You can't believe it. You're not on the outside watching the elephants. You get to ride an elephant where not many people get to say that. And you get to feed a giraffe. You get to pet the head of a giraffe. You get to feel the sticky tongue of a giraffe. It's I fell in love with that giraffe. It was very, it was great. The power of a wish, it's about a lot of things. It's about changing the world. It's about making a difference in a child. It's about rolling up your sleeves and knocking down walls or rolling up carpet if that's what the child's wish is. 
It's about making sure that a child smiles, that a child forgets about being sick, they laugh, and that we have wonderful, wonderful memories for them to be able to talk about or for people to be able to cherish forever and ever. For her to get to go on that trip, it just was like time to relax. And that's what everybody needed. It was like a breath after all of that. It taught us especially how to live for today and appreciate what you have for today, um, more so than we did before her diagnosis or before her illness. Dr. Wolf said, this trip is coming together pretty quick, but that doesn't mean that she only has a small window of opportunity to take this trip. But in all reality, she did only have that small window. Yeah, right after we got back at the end of she, January, she started having headaches again. After she passed away, the city donated a tree that was dedicated in memory of her, and the junior auxiliary donated a butterfly bench. Because her first wheelchair, she had bedazzled with butterflies <laughs> all over it. One thing the Moeller family has shown me is their uh, resilience. They are a shining example of a family that not only was granted a wish, but also a family that is supporting Make-A-Wish, and they continue to do so. You know, being business owners, we had done work with some, you know, donations and things with Make-A-Wish and Ronald McDonald House, and but never really realized just how important these organizations are because we know from a personal experience and we feel that if we can't use this donut shop for that type of platform, then it, we really don't need to be here as far as I'm concerned. That's my main goal. Just like the whole organization just doesn't go away. It just wasn't a trip for us and that yeah, was the end of it. It's just with. still ongoing. The whole thing is an evolving thing for our life, really. Once you witness what a wish does for a family, um, you're, 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 you're hooked in. The time and energy, the money, the efforts that you donate to Make-A-Wish do stay locally here in Mississippi. It makes a huge impact on the families and especially the children. I can't think of a greater gift than being able to give to an organization that makes a child know that they're valued and that they are here for a purpose and that they're loved. We need you to roll up your sleeves. We need you to get involved. We need you to think that this is an organization I want to help. I want to help a child that lives in my community or a child that lives in a community that I grew up in because sometimes just the smallest thing makes a huge difference. And you never know what that could be until you actually say, I want to be a part of the best nonprofit charity in the state of Mississippi. And by far, that's Make-A-Wish Mississippi. Thank you for taking off the stress of my aunts, uncles, parents, my grandpa, my pappy, my papa, my grandma, and my mitri, and my cousins. Thank you. You made a miracle happen.